Many thanks to PCB Wave for sponsoring this video. Good day everyone and welcome back to the X Explorer for another video. In the today's video we're going to talk about the 10 minutes transmitter. I built this transmitter three years ago and I decided to remake the video just because I um, in that uh, first video it was the first uh, CW transmitter that I built by the way um, but I made the mistake in the schematic that I presented in the video and I noticed that right away as soon as I posted the video so I, um, um, I corrected that into, into the video description and also in, in the comments but of course uh, not everyone um, reads those and uh, even today after three years I'm still getting comments uh, about that uh, the mistake and uh, I have a feeling that I'm just confusing people so I decided to remake the video since I'm also um, I was redesigning the PCB board uh, for um, for those that would like to order it from PCB way so um, Comparing to, to the, for example, the 700 milliwatts minimalist transmitter that I presented some while ago, uh, which works really nice, um, this one is for band, it is more like band specific. So I built uh, a version for the 40 meters band. But the advantage of the 10 minutes transmitter, uh, which by the way, it was presented in the Sprat, mag Sprat 82 magazine uh, back in 1996 by uh, G4 Romeo Alpha Whiskey, I hope I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, you can build it in less than 10 minutes. I think the first version that I built, uh, which um, I built using a homemade PCB board, it took me about 15 minutes and that included uh, making the PCB board as well. Uh, this version, the one that I'm using today, is just a test version on a prototyping board. Um, this one took me less than five minutes. So yeah, uh, it's really easy to build, it's, uh, it's uh, easy to use and it's very versatile because you can use it for more bands, not just for one band. Of course, with a, um, a band specific low pass filter on the output, so you don't have uh, harmonics uh, going on, on air all over the place. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, before talking about the schematic and everything else and making all the tests over here, of course, I cannot continue without saying thank you to my friends at PCB Way. Remember, uh, they have great PCB prototyping services, CNC, 3D printing, uh, SMD stencils and a lot more services available for you. They also have a great uh, store with uh, modules and a bunch of other things that you, you might find very useful for your projects. I would invite you to go have a look and uh, see what you like. Don't forget that in the video description down below you have a link that you can click and if you don't have an account you can register for your new, your new account and you'll get a discount on your first order. Um, so yeah, um, as I'm always saying, PCB way is the way. One more thing, uh, talking about uh, the final version of the, the 10 minutes transmitter. This over here is the, the 700 milliwatts minimalist transmitter. Uh, but before I forget, please remember that on PCB way, uh, you can order the PCB boards or you can order the assembled version of the each project that I'm having over there. Um, but for the 10 minutes transmitter in particular, um, if, the, if you order the assembled version, it will not include the heatsink for the transistor. So the heatsink you'll have to provide it yourself. Uh, I left a link in the um, bill of materials over there. With one example, you can buy one from whatever store you, you, you like. And also the variable capacitor that I have uh, over here is not uh, included into the, um, um, the finished assembled version that it's uh, sold by PCB Way. So I just wanted to clarify that because uh, these are harder to find and uh, yeah, it's uh, feel free to experiment, search for them whatever you can because uh, it's harder and harder to get them. But that's the reason why I didn't put them into the finished assembled version uh, sold by PCB Way. So here we are with the uh, uh, 10 minutes transmitter built on a prototyping board. Uh, I wanted to build it this way just because I wanted to experiment a little bit with the value of the inductor, the value of the resistor and so on and the transistor and it's a lot easier to change components this way um, uh, comparing to a finished uh, version uh, built on a PCB board which uh, it wouldn't be so easy to replace components and um, yeah. Uh, the variable capacitor that I'm using unfortunately does not have a thousand picofarads, it only has five, uh, 500 picofarads. 
but I'm only using one gang of the of the capacitor. I could use both of them and get 1000 picofarads, uh, but unfortunately uh, this one has a short circuit somewhere. I have to make some little adjustments and clean it up a little bit, but I didn't have time for that. So uh, I played around just with the 500 uh, picofarads. Of course, um, if you take a look on the on the screen, you'll see the PCB board design. You realize that I have a lot of space around the, the transistor. And the reason for that is that uh, I wanted to, um, to be able to place a, a heatsink on top of the transistor because it's overheating quite a lot. So um, yeah, I just wanted to leave enough space for, uh, for a heatsink. And that's the reason why you have so much space around the, the transistor. You could probably build it a lot smaller, uh, definitely. But anyway, uh, if, you, if you look on the screen, uh, you have the schematic. As you can tell, it's very simple. It only has eight components. Again, I'm going to repeat my, myself. It does not have a low pass filter. So you will need one depending on the, on the band that you're using. Um, I tested the transmitter with a couple of um, different crystals for different bands and we'll talk in just a little bit about the results. I'll, I'll show you how, um, uh, what result you can get for uh, at least uh, this is what I had um, uh, with uh, this build but probably you might be able to get better results if you're playing around a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm in a rush. Uh, mostly I'm interested in uh, in the 20 meters band, in the 40 meters band, and the 80 meters band. The rest of them I'm not using so much and I don't even have crystals for those. So uh, I turned on my uh, my Trace DX uh, and I placed it really close just so you can uh, hear better uh, my microphone. I don't know how, how, uh, how well my microphone picks up the sound. But uh, this is a crystal for 7.030 megahertz and uh, Right now, the output power is about 700 milliwatts, but I can hear some distortions over there, so that's not good. The idea is uh, when you adjust uh, the variable capacitor is to somehow listen carefully. Um, that's in case you don't have um, uh, something to measure the output signal of the transmitter, because it's different when you see the, the sine wave. Um, it's not exactly a perfect sine wave, but it's almost there. Uh, but the idea is that um, yeah, you, you, you have to be able to see if it has any uh, distortions, but it's really easy to hear that as well. So yeah, right now it's fe it feels like I'm pushing the transistor too much. So I'm going to increase the value of the, of the variable capacitor. Maybe even more. almost there so yeah I can get 700 milliwatts uh, of output power but it's very the signal is distorted so uh, this thing it doesn't make perfect contact over here So right now I'm getting around 550, 600 milliwatts, something like that. Sounds a lot better. Uh, I don't hear distortions anymore. So yeah, that's usually the way uh, you it's recommended to, um, uh, to adjust it. Now, of course, uh, uh, you might know better than me if you built this one in the, in the past, but um, this is the, the one thing that I didn't know in the past uh, is that you can actually use it for more frequencies, not just uh, one frequency that uh, I built it for. Uh, I built the 40 meters band version. So right now let's test the um, 80 meters band crystal. Um, I don't have exactly what I wish I had, but let's see, maybe I'm lucky to hear something. So right now on the 80 meters band, as I was saying, I'm getting just a little bit over 300 milliwatts. 
I might increase the value of the capacitor. I also hear some, uh, some distortions in here as well. So I'm going to increase the value even more. Uh, usually after you place the low pass filter the, the output signal gets very clean and it's also free of harmonics as well and I believe it could be uh, like a proper sine wave. Now it sounds a lot better and the power output is somewhere around 350 milliwatts. So this is for the 80 meters band. Um, yeah, this is this is the reason why I like this uh, transmitter is because it's very versatile. Now uh, let's test uh, 160 uh, meters band uh, crystal. Unfortunately, for this one, I don't have uh, something to listen to the signal. As you can tell, I'm getting about 100 milliwatts uh, of output power, maybe just a little bit uh, um, over 100 milliwatts. But something's not right because um, probably if I would hear the signal, but I can tell from the meter that it doesn't oscillate right away. It takes a little bit. So maybe I might need to increase the value of the, of the variable capacitor, but unfortunately right now I only have the, the 500 picofarads that I have available. So yeah, I might, uh, I might do this test uh, again on the 160 meters band. Um, at, at some later point when um, I'll fix the variable capacitor. Now let's do a test on uh, 10 megahertz for example. I have a crystal here, it's not for amateur radio bands, it's exactly 10 megahertz. Let me see if I can place it somewhere. Um, so I have to go back but you get an idea. Let's see how this one works. I'm going to put it somewhere around. So the maximum power output could be over Oh, it's nearly 900 milliwatts. So this is with a 10 megahertz crystal. Now I'm going to remove this one and I'm going to put the 14 megahertz crystal. Let me move over here. It's 14.050. This one doesn't sound so great. So I have to go lower in, in uh, the value of the variable capacitor. So you see, it's not very stable over here. I'm still not sure what's going on over here. Probably I have to do very fine adjustments on the value of the variable capacitor. It doesn't seem very stable, not sure why. But I have enough time to experiment and I would recommend you do the same. Anyway, uh, let me turn this off really quick just so we can hear each other. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a very, very simple uh, CW transmitter. Uh, it's very easy to build, uh, very few components. Uh, I think it's a great project for beginners and also uh, for example, if you organize an event or something like that, when you try to teach kids on how to build simple transmitters, um, this could be a very useful uh, thing to, to, to build because it's, it's very, very simple. It's only using a few components. And if you're not going on air with it, uh, you don't even have to build the low pass filter. So uh, maybe it's just for fun. Uh, you would build it um, and transmit into some dummy load or, or something similar. And uh, yeah, that would be great. Um, I think same like the where, where I have it, the 700 milliwatts minimalist transmitter. 
um, I think I was talking in the video about this one that if you don't want to build the, the low path filter on the output you might be able to use just um, uh, how do you call it an ATU um, I believe that by using an ATU you pretty much have a, a low pass filter because it, it would cut the, the other bands and um, it would be very uh, narrow band so um, um, that could work as well uh, without using a, a low pass filter so basically you would use the transmitter with an antenna tuner and uh, that might be able to cut the harmonics but you have to test it because I, I haven't tested that and um, I, have, I don't have anything to, to test that with. So again, it's a very, very nice transmitter. I hope you like it as much as I do. Feel free to experiment as much as possible. Uh, remember that you can also replace the transistor, um, test different transistors. Um, I would recommend you to, to forget about the, the ones uh, in like a plastic enclosure, uh, just because those tend to burn right away. Uh, they overheat quite a lot, so I recommend you metal cans transistors uh, using a heatsink, especially if you're planning to use it seriously. Uh, play around with the value of the resistor. Uh, for example, in the original schematic, it's um, uh, it is a 22 uh, kilo ohms uh, resistor. I'm also used 40 th 47 kilo ohms resistor just because it seems that uh, the transistor it does not overheat as much. Uh, feel free to experiment with the value of the inductor as well especially if you're trying to build for example a, a transmitter that is band specific so it's only for one band and that might help you get better results and uh, get the best out of it but anyway uh, I guess that's it for today I hope you liked this video I, found, I hope you found it useful uh, thanks to my friends from Solder Smoke because uh, uh, that's where I found the schematic of uh, of this transmitter the first time and um, I think uh, they also wrote a little bit about uh, about the video that I made at that time and I apologize Bill for deleting that video you might have to replace it with this one but uh, yeah I'm going to have to delete that one just so I don't confuse people about the mistake in the schematic anyway I updated the blog article as well I am um, uh, you can order PCB boards if you feel like uh, building a really nice transmitter using a, a PCB board uh, made properly. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, 73.